The Vietnam War was initially a fight between Northern Vietnam, which supported communism, and Southern Vietnam, which wanted to sustain a democracy. America's involvement in the conflict was primarily due to the Truman Doctrine, which pledged America to protecting any countries being prosecuted with communist takeover. Beginning around 1957, America fought alongside the Southern Vietnamese. By 1964, the fight had been reduced to mainly America and North Vietnam. America kept pushing more and more ground forces onto Southern Vietnam until the number of American soldiers had amassed to a whopping 543,000 men. After this apex, the number of ground troops was waned down little by little as America withdrew their soldiers. In January of 1973, a ceasefire was arranged between the opposing sides, just two months after all American troops were removed from Southern Vietnam. In 1975, Fighting was present once more in Vietnam, but this time America was not present to back up the southern Vietnamese. On April 30th of the same year, South Vietnam surrendered to North Vietnam. The total number of fatalities amounted to 1.3 million soldiers, and much of Vietnam was left a wasteland. America's involvement and efforts seemed to be for nothing. Today, Albert Lin shares his thoughts and recollections of what he experienced during his time in the reserves during the Vietnam War. What was your stance on America's involvement in Vietnam and why? Um, well, at that time I didn't think I'd be in the Army and I figured our government had a reason for doing what they were doing. So I kind of backed it. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you were uh, enlisted into the military. Was this influenced by the idea that you could be drafted or did you just do it out of yes. fear? It was enlisted. I, I applied to the Army Reserve and the Air Force, and I did well in those tests. But if I wasn't being drafted, I didn't have to go in. And then the draft board called and said I was going at the end of the month of September. So I had to decide on what to do. Did you know anyone that was that was deployed in Vietnam personally? And did they tell you what it was like? I had four people that I knew, and they all got killed. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, how did your family react when you were you enlisted into uh, Vietnam? They wished me well and said, good luck. <laughs> and how old were you at this time? Nineteen. Nineteen years old. Uh, did entering uh, the military obstruct any education plans you had set in place? No, I had started with the phone company for a couple of months, so I had a job to come back to. I thought about college, but since I got a half decent job with the phone company, that I'd stay with that. Now, did you go through any sort of training, and what was it like if you did? I went through basic training, which was an experience, mm -hmm. and then I went to advanced training for helicopter repairs, and that was very, I have to admit, all the schools in the military were good teachers and good schools. Did you ever feel uh, tempted to uh, retrain? Was it ever too difficult for you, or no. did you manage? No, no actually, I was, I was probably in better shape than most of the guys there. Mm. Uh, did you know people that were opposed to America's involvement in Vietnam at this time? No. None? Or none that anybody said. None that anybody said. And uh, were you aware of the divisions of people known as hawks and doves, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes, you were aware, and uh, did were you aware slash were you affected by the social separation they caused? No. You were not affected. While the fight raged on in Vietnam, at home people were divided amongst themselves. As mentioned in the interview, two parties formed regarding the support of America in Vietnam. Hawks were people that believed in America's fight against communism, and doves were against the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Many anti-war protests were arranged by members of the Dove Party. In the end of 1967, President Johnson hoped to add taxes to afford, to afford support in Vietnam. Did this change your stance on America's involvement with the tax increase? No. No, it's not. It didn't affect me. While my uncle was personally unaffected, tax increase issued by President Johnson to help further fund the war effort in Vietnam was not well received by American citizens and resulted in harming the support from the public. 
on January 27th, 1973, an armistice or a ceasefire was signed between the U.S., South Vietnam, and North Vietnam. Are you supportive of the ceasefire, or do you believe America should have kept on fighting? I, the ceasefire, I believe, left too many openings, which proved after the invasion from North Vietnam that they, they didn't, uh, really didn't negotiate this well. Uh, a ceasefire would be good, except a lot of people got executed after the ceasefire. I'm going to pull that. We left, we forced countries into this war, and then we left them get slaughtered after we pulled out. That bothered me. When you returned from the military, I imagine you saw many families and groups of friends that had suffered losses. What was it like seeing all this uh, heartbreak Throughout well, actually, it, it's very sad, actually. One of them was, I was back with a phone company, so I had a job, and one of the kids in grade school, I fixed the phone for his mother, and he got killed. And he was a friend, and that, that was years ago, and she still felt it. Mm -hmm. Was there anything you wish you would have done, or could have done, during your time around the Vietnam War? No, I pretty well pretty well lucked out with all the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Care to elaborate on those decisions? Well, I chose to go with reserves. I was lucky enough that I had a choice between the draft or the reserves or the Air Force. Uh, one was two years, one was four years, one was six years. Um, the schooling I got was pretty good. I would have liked to go in the Air Force, but they weren't like to be a pilot, so I didn't go in the Air Force. Uh, and when I come back, I had started with a phone company, so I had got a job. I had a job to come back to with a half decent job. So actually, I was very fortunate. A lot of people couldn't get jobs when they come back. Mm -hmm. Did you know anyone that couldn't get a job? I bumped into people. I didn't know them. I bumped into people that could get jobs. Now, whether or not they really didn't want jobs, I don't know, but they were unemployed and they couldn't get jobs. But when you don't, half a million people into the job market kind of makes it a stack job against the workers. Did you notice any racial uh, effect or influence on who did and didn't get a job once they returned from the war? Not from the jobs, but uh, the people that came back, there was, there was some uh, racism. For the most part, there wasn't because when you're in combat, you kind of rely on each other. But there were um, people that complained, not to be racist, uh, they, were, they were white guys, and a lot of the black guys refused to walk point, which was the guy that was shot first. They'd um, the walk on the landmine before the rest of the troops would get shot. And uh, there were a lot of black guys that would not go claiming racism, they making the black guy go first. Uh, whereas a lot of white guys, he said, the sergeant didn't want to get involved with this. So, and that's only like one or two platoons. I don't know how it was at all. I'm sure there were good guys, but the racism portion of that was the black guys didn't have to take the dangerous points because it looked racist. Uh, and it shouldn't be that way in the military. You go, he goes, he goes, you know, you go how you do it. But I heard that two or three times from different people at different sections. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that was the only racism that, that I heard. I didn't hear any uh, I didn't hear any black people, you know, complaining about it. But I only heard some white guys complaining about it. I am very fortunate to be able to have my great uncle Alfred alive today. But many others in his day were not as lucky in their path in the military regarding Vietnam. Earlier in the interview, I asked Alfred if he knew anybody that was deployed. And his abridged answer yeah, of four people that I knew and they all got killed took me by surprise. Coming from the man that can tell a story with no breaks for a solid forty five minutes, it struck me as shocking. It only goes to show that the Vietnam War and its effect on people on and off the battlefield has no mercy. Vietnam left a big, ugly bruise on America. An external conflict damaged Americans under their skin through many lost lives. And for what? 
Vietnam stands as a testament that although our gallant patriotism shines through, America does not always come out on top, and the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Lo siento por la poradora.